Hey folks, Randy Newberg here. Thanks for watching this episode from season nine of Fresh Tracks. Did you know that our Fresh Tracks Plus platform now has a free option? Yeah, if you go over there, you can watch this episode and a few others ad free. And those of you who are paid subscribers, you already know, you can get a lot of exclusive content there. You get early access to content. You get invited to our exclusive live streams. And some of you even win an hour of FaceTime with me where we can plan your hunt. Go check out freshtracks.tv at the link below. Well, I'm back in Arizona, hunting coos deer. I, I will admit that when I went to college here in Arizona, I developed an attachment to Arizona. And so I've always come back. I started applying again as a non-resident in Arizona, I believe in 1997 or 98. For a traveling non-resident hunter, it's hard to find better value than what Arizona gives you. All right. Well, we got out here a little later than I would have hoped, but actually we're a little earlier than I would have expected given what we were dealing with in terms of the uh, delays at the airport last night. Anyone who travels to hunt knows that you're gonna have a few complications along the way. I don't care if it's missed flights or whatever it is, delays. In this case, it was a rifle that did not make it here. Unfortunately, we had a really good person at Delta who went out of their way to make sure that my rifle was going to be on the next flight and it was but it really set us back because we'd planned on getting out to our camp which was a rented little travel trailer uh, we'd planned to get there at about oh seven o'clock the night before we started hunting well as it turns out we get there about 12 30 in the morning get all of our stuff unpacked and it's a really short night when the alarm went off it's going to be some nap time today, folks. I'm running on maybe four hours of sleep. This is a hand we're dealt. We're going to go pull off a royal flush. Randy Newberg is not going to be as sympathetic to these deer as he has been in past years. Not even a dick dick. Marcus asked me if I'm going to shoot a Sonora dick dick with a rifle. We'll see when the chance comes. Forkies might be in trouble. And my gut tells me I'm shooting. I just, I don't care big, small, dick, dick, or Boone and Crockett, anything in between. If my gut tells me, that's what I'm doing. So Marxes and I were talking about it and we said, well, it's a really dry year. Let's go hunt a place where we know there's water. And there's one spot where we've always hunted that always had water. We're kind of dragging because of how tired we are, but we get there and we can see there's water. We probably would have hiked further other than I didn't want to lose that prime glassing period. I wanted to get further in, but... I'm going to start glassing now before the sun comes all the way up. I'd rather be on the optics glassing them far away at that prime time than to be hiking during that prime glassing period and then not see much. So we sat there and I don't know how many deer we saw. Um, I think the count was 29 does. Well, here comes another one. Come on, step out. I bet it's a doe also if this one's a doe. Yep, two does.
Eventually, the sun's way up high, the mirage is getting bad, so I decided, all right, let's hike all the way back to where we'd planned to get. And I'm gonna hike probably a mile, mile and a half back that way and uh, get up a little higher where I can look down in and be there for this afternoon. Hopefully something comes out. There's definitely a lot of deer here. If there's this many does here, that tells you there's gotta be good feed and good water. One of the beautiful things about Arizona's licensing system is they have multiple opportunities to come and hunt deer. In January, we always come down and do the over-the-counter coos deer hunt. And Arizona will let you take one deer per calendar year between January 1 and December 31st. So if I don't fill my over-the-counter archery coos deer tag, which I seem to never do, I can still apply for a rifle deer tag that happens in the fall. I look at the value of what I get out of my investment in Arizona. I get to hunt over the counter in January. I get to apply for elk and antelope and I probably draw elk every five or six years. And then I get to apply for the rifle deer and the bighorn sheep. And then in the fall, I get to apply for the archery javelina and turkey and all the other stuff. And we get on this knob and you can see forever there. It's what I hoped it would be when we got back there. And so we're waiting out the day. You know, it's bright sun, it's 70 some degrees. The deer aren't going to be up and moving at that point, so I, I took almost a two-hour nap. And a power nap wouldn't even describe it. I mean, I was out. And I hear Marcus say, mountain lion. I'm like, what? Oh, look at that. He's coming right here. Oh, there's a bunch of kittens behind it. It's a female with kittens. We're not the only deer hunters here. I mean, this is 80, 90 yards away, and it's really rare. This is the second time I've seen mountain lions out doing their thing in all my years of hunting. So this was a rare treat. I couldn't believe it. And the little ones are working their way up behind her and she's just sitting there looking around. I'm thinking, man, I wish I knew to hunt how to hunt deer like she does. And the female, she's just leading the pack and she goes and sits on this ledge right out in the middle of the sun. I think she sees us now. Yeah, look at her, she's sneaking away. Yeah, there she goes. That is so cool, man. Two little ones. She's out teaching them how it's done. That's as cool as anything I'm gonna see on this trip. That's a deer hunter there. I'm an amateur compared to that. That is so cool, man. And that's the beauty of this place of Arizona. Besides the fact that there's so much public land and such a variety of species, 
you just never know what you're going to see. After the mountain lion came along and that excitement waned, Marcus says, oh, I got a little buck way over on the other side of the canyon. Well, Marcus, he wakes me up from a nap and says, Randy, I see a little buck over here. Way down by, by where we were glassing this morning. Well, I get to look and I'm like, well, why don't we shoot that bigger buck that's bedded right beside him? It's 1,180 yards to where they're at. How do you see those, Marcus? They're laying out in a bunch of brown, gray dirt. The doe gave them away. Oh. The doe was walking. There you go. They say we go do this, huh? Marcus and I grabbed our stuff and we just start shimmying down through one of these canyons. There's two more knobs out there, and I'm thinking, well, if we can get to the furthest one, I know that's not going to be much over 300. The real thicket is, can we get around here without being spotted? Marcus is like, oh yeah, he's not as clumsy as I am. Make sure I know which one is the buck. A good buck. 
So we sit there for I don't know how long, looking at them through the spotting scope, ranging everything. I see the bigger buck, he's looking right at us, he's bedded. I don't have a shot from here. I don't have a shot, he's bedded by him. I got up, climbed up to this little rock opening, got my pack down, got my mat set down. I mean, I could have almost fallen asleep there. It was such a comfortable shooting position. I can't shoot at that bedded deer because there's so much of the cat claw brush. The only part of the deer I can see is just its head and its neck. So while laying there, I decided, well, I'm just gonna dry fire a bunch of times. I'm gonna work on my breathing cycles. I'm gonna see what my heart rate is doing. Hey folks, Randy Newberg here. Hope you're enjoying this episode from season nine of Fresh Tracks. It's been out on our Fresh Tracks Plus platform since we launched last September, and now we're launching season 10 over there. No matter where you watch us, whether it's on YouTube or whether you're one of our paid subscribers, we thank you. And if you want to check out Fresh Tracks Plus, I hope you go to the link below. It'll take you to freshtracks.tv. Whether you sign up for the free version over there or you sign up for the paid version, either way, we really appreciate it. Finally, the buck stands up and Marcus gives me the command that I'm on him, I'm good. On him, on him. And I'm like, all right, buddy, this is gonna be a short day for you. Ready? Yep, yep. Over him. Over him? Yep. He's down lower. Like, you gotta be kidding me. How can that, that, that can't be. He dropped down another, he's 30 yards closer to us now, 40 yards closer maybe. He's looking behind him. Well, I look and the deer's standing over there looking around like, what was that noise? Which is usually a sign that you hit high. If you hit low, stuff flies up and they just take off. Well, he gives me another shot. But now he's turned the other direction and I dialed it down. Done. Yep. Done. What's that? You hit him. There he fell he, over. Yeah, or he's, his head's still up, but he's looks like he's about, he's done. Boom, tips over. I'm like, now why couldn't I have done that on the first shot? Nice job, Randy. <laughs> I shouldn't have let that get to me. I should have enjoyed the moment that, hey, guess what, Randy, you actually got this deer. This is your first coos buck. You ought to be dancing in the streets. <sighs> well, better mosey over there before it gets too dark, huh? How about that, folks? Marcus Hockett, he just spots him up for you. All right, we better get over there. We got about 20 minutes of daylight. <laughs> Nothing like having him wait forever. <laughs> he was just gonna see if I'd fall asleep waiting for him. I know some people are gonna think I wasn't that excited to shoot that buck. Well, I got news for you, I was. But the problem with me is I put so much pressure on myself that the shot has to be perfect. I have no idea what happened, but I hold myself to a much higher standard than that. All I can figure is operator error. Here he is. Okay. Yep. Well, you're not kidding when you say they're not that big. I had no idea they were that small. I've been close to them, but when they're laying there on the ground, they look really small. <laughs> My first who's there. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, thank you. Beautiful. 
made a great stock. Everything worked out perfect other than my first shot. And I end up with my first coos buck. My first coos whitetail, cow's whitetail, whatever you want to call it. And uh, drew this unit that you can pretty much draw every year. And look at these beautiful little things. It's December, all my friends are back home in Montana and it's miserable. And I'm sweating right now. Don't tell my wife. Your turn, Marcus. That is like a really good cap to what has been a pretty hard and frustrating season. This year with COVID, it's been very complicated. Our schedules have been messed up. We've had to juggle this, juggle that. We've missed this hunt, missed those days. It's like everybody, right? This year has been one of those years where you just can't wait till you can hit the reset button. We get to hike out of there in the dark. And as I'm hiking out, I'm just thinking about, you know what, this is such a cool place. This place over the last four years has grown on me. And you realize how steep it is, how rugged it is, how everything bites and grabs at you. And you think, how do animals live through this? How adaptable must they be to not just make a living here, but prosper? And Marcus and I are walking and I shine my headlamp over and Marcus says, hey, get over here. You can see the white chest. See their bobcat or a mountain lion. And probably 80 yards away are two great big eyeballs about that far apart. And I think I see another shot of them. I'm pretty sure it's about mountain lions because there's, did you see the big one yet? Uh, oh, there's a big one. Uh, it's behind the rock, yeah. I trekked over to where Marcus was. I was thinking of veering left. I probably would have walked right underneath those things. I don't know what would have happened, but I don't really care to find out because in the dark with me with my rifle strapped to my back and carrying deer on my back, maybe they were hungry. I mean, she didn't look that big, but she looked big enough that I wouldn't want to have to fight her. Yeah. Uh, well, we might sleep in tomorrow. We didn't get any sleep last night. We're not gonna get much tonight. By the time we get back, maybe take care of some meat tomorrow. Go shoot the rifle so you're comfortable where it's hitting. So, with one buck down, time for Marcus. I've been thinking for days Yeah, I've been thinking for years That I tell myself I stop the things That keep me from you, dear But I keep on losing it Oh, I keep on losing it So what's the plan? The plan is to kill a deer. We're gonna go up there to the glass and knob old reliable glass and knob where Wade shot his deer, what, two years ago? Two years ago, two years roll ago. the clip. Roll the clip. So we go moseying down in there, mid afternoon we get there and there's a water tank there. There's one on the way in and we look, well, that one's dry. Hopefully the one up in the canyon has some water in it. It's a good sign. Do try. We get to the water tank, that tank is dry also. It is not good, folks. This is the biggest water source for miles around. And it's dry as a board. And we're thinking, should we just turn around? Should we even go up in this 
canyon here. What's, what's going to keep deer here if there's no water? Well, I say what we do. We know that this is a really good basin from prior hunts. If we go in here this evening and we don't see any deer, it tells us that these coos deer can't make a living without predictable, reliable water. Yeah. Well, we had a lot of other hunters in here. So I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign. <laughs> so we go up there and we're putting the glass to the hillside hard. I would say for three hours we're glassing and glassing and glassing. Didn't see anything. Or the deer. I have no idea. <laughs> it's like they need water or something. Imagine that. I don't know. They, they I haven't seen a single one though. Me either. Not a doe, not a buck, nothing. We'll find them. If it might not be here. We're, we'll find them somewhere. If they are here, we're going to find them. Yeah. Finally, Marcus comes over. He's like, I see three does up there on that bench up there. I'm like, oh, better than I'm seeing over on this side. Well, we've seen uh, three does so far. So there are deer here. I was starting to wonder if there was even any deer here, but there's definitely some. <laughs> three does. So fingers crossed, maybe a buck will come out. Now the sun's starting to cast some long shadows in this basin. And Marcus comes over and whispers, he's like, hey, I just saw a small buck. Like the peak of that hill. He comes straight down. There's like a triangle of stuff in the shadows. Yeah. He was right in line with that triangle, but on that back hill. But he was walking towards us. Okay. But there's a de I think there's a decent amount of that that's out of sight. Yeah. Looking at it now. Okay. So I don't know if it's worth trying to run over there. I mean, it's a definite definitely shoot the buck. I mean, it's... You call. I, I didn't get that. No reason to sit around here. <laughs> Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. So we got about 30 minutes, if that mad dash down here, up the other side, set up. Marcus says he's gonna shoot him at 200 yards. All right, let's go. And we're just going down this, this canyon, down in this dry wash. Start climbing up the next ridge. And I have no idea where this buck was. Finally get to this last little knob and there's a little roll out in front of us, but there's a doe probably, I don't know, 150 yards out there and she just got us pegged. She's just like. And the doe sees us now and she starts working into some brush to our left. And all of a sudden I hear some colorful language from Marcus. And Marcus is over there getting all set up. Okay, you can move it on. Ready? Ready? Yep. Oh, well, he starts doing a little bit of hopping and jumping and moving his way up the hill. You dropped him. How did? Dropped him. 
freaking dropped him. You sure? I'm pretty sure. I saw him tip over. Do you want to, Marcus? Can you run over there? Yeah, I'll stay here and mark him. I sent him over there so that I could mark the spot. And then we wouldn't lose it. All right. Got a good gear. Oh. Oh, right at last light. I left all the cameras back there with Randy. I, just, I wasn't sure about the shot, so I ran up here to make sure. And Mark, Randy marked him back there for me. Oh, got it done. Sweet. Oh, this is awesome. Little, little buck, heck yeah. I was ready to shoot anything. This is a cool little, little four point. And I saw him walk in there and he turns around and gives the woo-hoo. I'm like, ah oh, man, that was, that, that was a bit of a fire drill. So not only was Marcus having to find the deer that he'd seen and get ready for a shot, he had to get the camera at least set up and ready for me. What you got there, Marcus? Here's the deer. Uh, very cool little tiny guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh. And just like that, in two days, we came here and we filled two tags. Uh. Heck yeah. <laughs> uh. I think you, you got me beat. <laughs> yeah, well, you got me beat last time you were here. <laughs> True, I just wanted to get another one under my belt before I get too picky with these guys. <laughs> That's cool. Well, anyone who knows Marcus Hockett knows that when he gets in the mode to fill a tag, you don't want to be the unlucky specimen in the way. <laughs> Great job, Marcus. Oh, thanks. I've got the easy part. I got a couple hind quarters. Marcus has a rifle, a whole bunch of camera gear, both front quarters, back straps, tender loins, and the head. <laughs> oh, wow. The good news is it's all downhill to the truck, about not even three quarter mile away, probably. The multitude of species, the amazing landscapes, all of the public land. It's just a remarkable place with remarkable hunting opportunities and I'm glad to be here taking advantage of it.